We're going to continue our video lectures on systems of government and cover the unitary system. A unitary system of government is where all powers are held by the central authority. Also, the local governments have very little to no power, and most governments are considered unitary. If you notice the diagram to your right, the larger circle in the center represents the central authority. The larger circle represents where most of the power resides. The arrows going out represents the power leaving the central authority and going to regional or national authorities. The little black dots would represent the regional or national authorities. And typically, the power is only given out when the central authority needs to delegate to lift some kind of burden. And regional authorities can typically cannot create laws that conflict with the central authority's laws. So when the central authority creates laws, it's for all people at all times. Two examples of unitary systems are the United Kingdom and Cuba. The main thing that these two country or these two systems have in common are that their national government has all the power. Also, their local government has little to no power. Even though they both fall under the unitary systems, there are very diverse differences between the two countries. For example, the United Kingdom operates under a unitary parliamentary democracy. We'll get more into that when we discuss types of government. They also have citizens that vote for parliament members, which in turn, the prime minister is selected from the parliament members that are elected by the citizens. The United Kingdom is made up of Wales, Scotland, England, and Northern Ireland. And all of these um, countries fall under a unitary system. So all these countries have a parliament that meets in London, and they get together and discuss uh, policies and laws that are distributed throughout all of these regional areas. Now in Cuba, Cuba has been under a unitary communist dictatorship since 1959 when Raul and Fidel took over, took over Cuba. Citizens have no say in the way the country is run whatsoever. Now one thing I want you to take into consideration is a communist dictatorship. Communist is a type of economy, it's not a type of government, and we'll discuss that further when we get to types of economies and um, dictatorship will be broken down in the lecture on types of government. But a dictatorship is typically ran by someone who has elected themself, them, themselves. Fidel Castro often goes by pres presidential or President Castro, which is kind of misleading in the sense that he was not voted in democratically, which is what someone un under a democracy would envision of how he would come to power. There are advantages and disadvantages to a unitary form of government. We're going to cover briefly um, just three of each. For an advantage, uniform policies, laws, enforcement throughout the, throughout the country. So in the UK, they have uniform policies and laws that are distributed through Wales, Northern Ireland, England, and Scotland. Um, they would have fewer conflicts between national and local levels, and also a greater unity and sense of stability. The disadvantages would be that the central authority would be out of touch with local needs and issues. And because sometimes the central authority can be so out of touch, it's slow to rectify the problems. And number three, it does not always meet the needs of all citizens. Sometimes when the central power becomes too involved in local needs, it, it tends to not meet the needs of everyone under the system. Now I want to leave you with your homework, which is to find two examples of a unitary system of government. And once you find these two examples, I want you to explain what makes these two systems or what makes these two countries unitary. The two types of government 
under unitary that I would like for you to find are an absolute monarchy and an autocracy. Please refrain from using the examples that I have listed, um, the United Kingdom or Cuba. We will be prepared to discuss this when you come into class and we will have an activity that you can complete further to deepen your understanding of a unitary system.